guys, welcome to Learn Extra Live. Of course, grade 12s, it's finally your turn. And today in our physical science show, we are doing chemical equilibrium. The show is proudly sponsored by Macmillan. Big ups to Macmillan. Thank you very much. Guys, thank you for joining us. As I said, it's chemical equilibrium with Tracy. Tracy, please tell us a bit of what we'll be doing today. Don't well, give it all away, though. No, 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 no. We've got a fun experiment, which is cool. No, no risks of me blowing anything up. Um, I know. I'm sorry. But I'm just going to be a little bit of a magician. I'm going to okay. do some nice color changes. The girls are going to love it. Because um, they have very pretty colors, by the way. Is it? Okay. Yeah. I'm not a big pink fan, but it's a pretty I pink. I love pink. Yeah, I mean, uh, it doesn't Yay. matter. Um, so we're going to look at ke chemical equilibrium. It, got, it follows on from rates. And basically, we're going to look at what happens in a system where a uh, reaction is reversible. Okay. Yeah. That sounds That's exciting. Cool. So, yeah. guys, please stay glued to those seats, as I always say. And, of course, you can join us on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash learn extra, as well as on our Twitter handle, which is at learn extra. Guys, remember, this is where you guys can ask any questions that you need to ask, any comments that you need to make, anything any comments that you need to make comments on, that doesn't make sense, but you know what I'm saying. So make sure that you jump on the page right now because things are already happening, guys. Things are happening really fast, so please jump onto the bus and come along with us for an awesome, awesome ride. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you. I'm, I'm, it's been a long couple of hours, has it? It has. And make comments on the comments. Brilliant. You anyway. can't make comments on comments, okay? Sorry, I'll do, I'm going to just teach. I think it's just easier. <laughs> okay, so... We are looking at chemical equilibrium. This goes with rates of reaction, which we did last week. Grade 12s, I guarantee you're going to get chemical equilibrium, okay? So what are we actually going to look at today? Well, we're going to define the concept of phase equilibrium because that starts us on the journey of equilibrium. Then we're going to define and discuss what chemical equilibrium actually is. Then we need to go and look at a, at a Frenchman, Le Chatelier, who is going to make your life a little bit difficult because he has a principle which we need to use over and over again. And I'm actually going to demonstrate how we can use Le Chatelier's. And we are going to explain changes in equilibrium that we see. Chemical equilibrium and how we affect chemical equilibrium is actually really important, particularly in our industrial processes, grade 12s, because things like when we're making sulfuric acid, which you may you probably haven't done yet, in the contact process, one of the processes is when we make sulfur trioxide, and it's got to be done at certain conditions, certain temperatures, certain pressures, because we need to make sure we get lots of product at the end, otherwise it becomes a waste of money. Same with when we make ammonia, it's also a reversible reaction, gets done in the harbor process, which you have done since grade 10, in certain temperatures and pressures, simply because we need it to be done in such a way that we get lots of ammonia out at a reasonable rate that costs us a reasonable amount of money. Because obviously if it costs us too much or it takes too slowly, we don't make any money at the process and that sort of is a bit silly then, okay? So let's discuss the whole concept of phase equilibrium. I'm sure you've all done this at some stage, particularly in summer when it's hot, you have a glass of water and you put it down somewhere and you leave it and you come back to the glass of water and half your water's gone because you left it alone and it's now evaporated, okay? Or you've done that because you've left something, say, by your bedside, by your bed, or you left it out in the kitchen and you come back a couple of days later, or any, anything like that, and it, some of it's just gone, it's evaporated. That's an open system, okay? Now, what's actually happening is the, we have a phase change because we have liquid, in this case water, that's going from being a liquid into a gas, okay? So we have evaporation happening. It's an open system, so I have a little bit of a diagram here. So we have um, water in a beaker over here, and what's happening is some evapor lots of evaporation is happening. On the sides of the glass, you'd probably see a little bit of condensation depending on the temperature, and so a little bit of condensation is still happening, so we have a double rate. We have a part of when the evaporation is happening, sometimes when condensation is happening, but it's an open system able to disappear and the water level will eventually sink okay however if we took the same glass and mm -hmm. we covered it so we now put a lid on it it's now a closed system if you were to watch it okay so you had some time on your hands and we started a new system and we watch it and we put the water in and we put a lid on the top we would actually see the water level drop a little bit 
and then eventually, and then it'll stay constant. And then we'll be like, okay, that was interesting. The water level drops because we need evaporation to take place. Now, evaporation takes place at all temperatures. Depending on the temperature, it depends on how quickly it is, okay? But the evaporation takes place, but it's a closed system. Those wat that water vapor has nowhere to go. So eventually it touches the sides, touches the, touches the lid, and it condenses. So it becomes liquid again, okay? So what's actually happening is we now get a process where evaporation is happening, liquid is turning to vapor, condensation is happening, vapor is turning to liquid, and after a period of time, the rate at which evaporation is happening is equal to the rate at which condensation is happening. This is what we call a dynamic equilibrium. Even though if we were just looking at the glass, it would appear as if nothing's happening. If we could have microscope glasses and we could actually see the little water molecules, we would see them escaping from the water as quickly as they're going back in, okay? So we're creating what we call a dynamic phase equilibrium, okay? Dynamic because the, it's happening all the time. It's not static. There's something happening even though we cannot see it on a macroscopic level. Something is happening. It's a phase equilibrium because it's a phase change, okay? Now, what does this mean for us? The rate of evaporation, very important here, rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation. We spoke about rate last week, so they're happening together. We can, and they're happening at the same time. We can represent this here, it's what I've shown on the board, liquid, double arrow, double half arrows going in two directions becoming vapor. Okay, please be careful here, grade 12s. Sometimes, and this is more because it's difficult to find the symbol in, on a keyboard, okay, is sometimes you'll see it written with full arrows. It's actually not the correct symbol. You shouldn't write it with full arrows. It's got to be half arrows, so please don't do that. Half arrows showing that there's a process going to the left, which we would call the forward process. Process coming to the, um, that's to the right. It's a good thing I know my left from my right. Going that way to the right, that's the forward process. Coming backwards is the reverse process. And they're happening at the same rate at the same time. Okay? Same rate, same time. Very, very important. Now, why is that important for chemical equilibrium? Because if we can get a phase equilibrium, if we can get to this process where phase change can happen at the same rate, then maybe that can happen with chemical reactions, okay? Chemical reactions can only reach this equilibrium state if they are spontaneously reversible, all right? So, for example, if we put magnesium in hydrochloric acid, we get magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. That is not going to reverse itself. So you're not going to get a situation where the magnesium chloride is going to react with the hydrogen and give us magnesium metal again. Just not going to happen all by itself. Not spontaneously. It needs a lot, a lot of help. But we can have other equations such as hydrogen plus iodine giving me hydrogen iodide. This reaction is spontaneously reversible. In other words, when I put hydrogen iodine in a... In a, in a beaker, test tube, and I close it, okay? I close the system. It's going to make the hydrogen and the iodine are going to bond together. They're going to form hydrogen iodide, HI. After a while, the hydrogen iodide molecules are going to be running around my closed system. They're going to bump into other hydrogen iodide molecules and then go and make hydrogen iodine again. So it happens spontaneously. We don't need to help it. What we would see... If we could actually see it, this is a little more difficult because of the color, because they're all colorless gases, except hydrogen, no, iodine's a purple gas, but it doesn't matter, is it would actually physically be very difficult to see this situation happening, okay? But if we could put on microscope, microscope glasses and actually see the molecules, we would see that eventually we get to the point where as fast as I'm making the hydrogen iodide, the HI, the HI is going, no, I don't want to be here and becoming hydrogen iodine again, okay? It's reversible, okay? Reversible, very, very important. 
both gases. Now, please understand something here, grade 12s. For a reversible reaction, it doesn't mean that everything has to be in the same phase. Often they are, but they don't have to be. So they don't all have to be solids, they don't all have to be gases, they don't all have to be liquids or anything like that. Often they're in the same phase, but it doesn't have to be in the same phase. It helps, though. This particular reaction, first of all, there's something very important that I've said here. It's got to happen in a closed system. That simply means in a system where nothing can escape. With a gas, it's exactly what it says. It means it has to be in a system that, that's got a lid to it. We don't want any of the gases to escape. Because if we allow, so if we put the hydrogen and iodine together and we allow the hydrogen and iodine to escape, it has no reason to bump into other hydrogen and iodine molecules and form hydrogen and iodine again. Okay, so it's got to be in a system where they're forced to interact with each other again. Now, last week, right at the end, we sort of started looking at rate graphs. This is very important. This is a reaction rate graph, okay? The top part is the forward reaction rate. Now, you're probably saying, hang on, wait, Tracy. Why does the forward reaction start so high? Because remember, the rate of reaction is determined by how much stuff we have. So at the beginning of a system like this, I don't have any hydrogen iodide. I'm putting in lots of hydrogen, lots of iodine. So there's lots of those molecules around. And remember, the more molecules that are around, the more likely they are to collide with each other, which means the more likely they are to collide with the correct orientation, with sufficient energy, so it becomes an effective collision. So at the beginning, high reaction rate for the forward reaction. Forward reaction being the reaction, and now I've got this error in the wrong place. I've just noticed that. Sorry, that should be an error there. Okay, and a plus sign over here. I do apologize. So the forward reaction is when the hydrogen plus the iodine gets to the HI. Okay, and it slows down. As it goes along, it starts to slow down, so it gets less and less steep, and eventually it starts to look like it goes flat. Okay, now under normal circumstances, that's where I would say it's reached completion, but this is a reversible reaction. At the beginning of the reaction, we don't have any hydrogen iodide, no HI, so the rate is zero, and it slowly creeps up because as the forward reaction is going, I get more and more HI. As I get more HI, the more likely they are to collide with each other, the more likely they are to collide with each other, the more effective the collisions become. And eventually it speeds up until we get to a place where the rates are now equal. Be careful with what my graph is. This is a reaction rate graph, not a concentration. This does not mean at all that the concentration of the hydrogen, the iodine, and the HI is the same. Not at all. You have to get this great times, okay? It's easy for us to go, well, then, well, the rates are equal, so they must all be the same amount. No, they're not, okay? They're not the same. They just get to a point where it appears, and if I was looking at it, it would actually look as if the reaction had stopped because the rates are the same. So as fast as I'm making one thing, that thing is actually making the other stuff to start off with, okay? They are equal in rate. If I could measure, so if I had a special piece of equipment that could actually measure the concentration of the hydrogen, the concentration of the iodine, the concentration of the HI, we would see that those concentrations aren't changing. They're not changing at all, but they don't have to be equal. Sometimes they might be, okay, that's very rare, but they might end up being the same. It all depends on the reaction, and it depends on the conditions under which the equilibrium has been made. Okay, that's really important. It all depends on the conditions because those conditions happen under a whole bunch of different things. So the equilibrium reaction can happen at different conditions, different pressures, different volumes, different concentrations, different temperatures, all of which affect how much of everything we have at the end. Okay, so be careful with that. This equilibrium state is found under certain conditions. I'm, what we're going to look at actually in the next segment when I do my demonstration is I'm going to look at what is it I can do to change where this equilibrium is. Okay? At the moment, 
we would say we have an equilibrium state and we can say either it lies to the left or the right. So what we're saying is either we have lots of product or we have lots of reactant. All depends, okay? But I can adjust that. And in industry, this is really important because, for example, if we're making ammonia and we do it under certain conditions and we only get a little bit of ammonia at the end by the time it reaches equilibrium, that doesn't help us because the fertilizer e industry really needs it. We need lots of ammonia. So then we adjust things like pressure, like temperature, like all c volume because it's a gas. So, so we get lots of ammonia at the end, okay? And those conditions, how we change those conditions is very, very important. And we're going to do what we call shifting of the equilibrium. It's actually lots of fun, okay? So we're actually, I think, Kat, yes, we are ready for almost ready. No, no, almost? no, give me two more seconds, okay. sorry. Um, because there's actually certain conditions I've mentioned. I just want to make sure you guys see these. Okay. For equilibrium to be there, must be a closed system. I've already said the con concentrations must remain constant and the rates of the forward reaction must be equal to the rates of the reverse reaction, okay? With that in mind, keep that in the back of your mind. I think it's time for a break and then we're so. going to do a demonstration. Okay, you guys know that Tracy never wants to go for a break, so we're going to have to force her <laughs> to go for a break. Get yourself a glass of water or not. Just stay, stay glued to the screens, guys, because after this, some awesome, awesome stuff is going to be happening. See you just now. Welcome back, guys. If you have just joined us, we are doing physical science for grade 12s. And today we are doing chemical equilibrium. Before we continue with the show, I have something really awesome, really great to show you guys. This is After Earth, guys, the movie. It's really, really awesome. Before I say anything else, I need you guys to actually watch the trailer because we're going to chat about it afterwards, but just watch the trailer and stay... These ears and these eyes must stay glued to the screen so that we can chat about it more afterwards. Okay, watch. In the field, you are emotionally unpredictable. You confuse courage with recklessness. I'm not advancing you. You have a son that you do not know. He's reaching for you, and he does not need a commanding officer. He needs a father. Go make some good memories together. Crash landed. Two confirmed survivors. Do you know where we are? No, sir. This is Earth. There's an emergency beacon in the tail section of our ship, approximately 100 kilometers from here. We need to retrieve that beacon. Or well, we're going to die. Everything on this planet has evolved to kill humans. Together, we will survive. I hear something. It has found you. We must abort this mission. You wouldn't give any other ranger that order. You are not a ranger. You are my son. Remember, danger is very real. But fear is a choice. If we are going to survive this, we fight. Guys, isn't that just absolutely awesome? I cannot wait to watch the movie, guys. It's going to be so good. More importantly, we need to, we really, 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 really need to start looking after our Earth. I don't want those demon animals running after us at some point of my life, and I don't want my kids to go through that either. So we need to start looking after our Earth right now, today, this very moment. And guys, of course, Learn Extra Live has got your back. 
Stay tuned to the Facebook page. We will be putting stuff up from the 7th of June, guys. 7th of June is when this comes out, and we're going to have some awesome lesson plans, some stuff on Facebook, and obviously, obviously, because this is Learn Extra Life, there's going to be huge prizes to be won. So make sure that you are fully, fully, fully on the page from then and even before. Jump onto the page right now if you need to hear any more about that. Tracy, yes. are you there? I'm here, I'm here. That's my kind of movie, by the way. That's your kind of it's movie. It's not obvious as a science teacher. Hey, no, that's uh, my <laughs> kind of movie. <laughs> I'm like, yay. I'm so Isn't excited. it awesome? <laughs> right now, my kids are going, oh, my face. <laughs> Please don't do that. It's embarrassing. Like, no, that's actually probably what my brother's doing. He's going, Tracy, No, just Tracy, don't, just stop. Don't just stop. Just <laughs> give it up as a bad joke. Anyway, no, that's definitely Mark. We were, we were watching it in the monitor, and I'm like, oh, I can do that. I know, I like, know. So okay, that's a bit scary, though. It's a bit scary, but I like the kind of scary it is because it actually shows us the reality. Oh, yeah, I know. And um, um, I know in the grade 11's lesson, we were looking at a whole bunch of stuff to global yeah. warming. And in fact, even chemical equilibrium is yeah. appropriate because remember, our Earth is a, is, a, is a system. It's a chemical equilibrium system. Of course it is. And we're actually busy changing the balance and it's got to readjust such a good somehow thing, eh? yeah it's and obviously the movie has will smith and jaden smith oh. my favorite jaden's a little young um what? I'm, I'm never too young i'm joking <laughs> careful we'll wait till he gets older i'm gonna have to have a chat to her we, we're gonna have a chat afterwards um, i'm just saying even for you young lady um, but he's, I'm old enough to be his mom, so, but Will Smith, we can do. Will Smith we, is awesome. We can do. Will Smith is awesome. I just can't compete with the wife, but. Damn. Damn. <laughs> anyway, wrong country, anyway, but moving on, moving on. Anyway, so, what are we going to do now? Let's get back to the real science, shall we? Um, is we're going to look at a chemical equilibrium, and what I've said is a little bit of chemical magic. I love it. And what we have here is we have a control test tube, and if you look carefully, you can see it's a nice pink color. Maybe I should just put it down. I think it's a bit easier. It's a nice pink color, and what we have in here is a solution of cobalt chloride. Okay, it's quite a complicated molecule, which is put a little bit of water, a little bit of ethanol, so it's a nice cobalt chloride. It's nice and pink. This is my control. <coughs> now, both of these... Look, this one's a little darker because it's, it's slightly str stronger concentration. This is the one I'm going to use, okay? It's a slightly st um, stronger concentration of the cobalt chloride, so we see a nicer color change. Now, if we look at the board, okay, is what we're going to do is we're going to look at the, we're going to investigate the effect of concentration and temperature on equilibrium. And I've actually got the equation there, which is the cobalt chloride, COCl42 minus, which is blue, actually in water, which is H2O, and then it goes to CO2, um, COH2O62+, I actually don't know how to pronounce that, iron, and Cl-, minus, and the other one is pink. Now, what this means is if we look at my solution as it stands now, okay, I actually have a lot of the product in it, which is why it's more of a pink than a blue, and it's really more purple than a blue, and then the delta H, which I've got there, is negative zero, at uh, negative zero, Smaller than zero, it's negative, okay, which means it's exothermic in the forward reaction, okay? Sorry, and I'm touching my ears. Just today, my earpiece is just having a bit of a moment, but it's okay. okay. Hopefully, I'm not looking quite like the Martian I was earlier. No, you're looking just fine. Brilliant. So <laughs> now what I'm going to do now, watch carefully, is I'm going to put it in the hot water, and I'm going to leave it there for a little bit, and I'm changing the conditions. This is a closed system. There are no gases involved in this. It's all liquids in a solution. So it's a closed system. Nothing can escape. And now I'm changing the conditions. So I'm changing things like temperature. This is important. Now, hopefully, because we have a wonderful Mr. Cameraman, if we look at that, look at that. Look at the difference. Wow. Okay, Just you like can already that. see. So we can see that it's gone quite a dark pur um, purpley blue. Okay, so we leave it in there a little bit longer. I just want you to see the color change. We, you're only using the one, so we've got the um, change so you can see it. We leave it in there. This is hot water. Okay, you can probably see the condensation. It's really hot, so I'm not actually going to take it anyway because that's going to burn me. If I drop things, it gets wet and yeah, electronics and people get upset and shout in my ear and, you know, it's not good. It's something I do in my classroom. So anyway, so here we go. Very nice. Now, all of it's blue. Okay, beautiful. Now, what does this mean? This means... I have shifted the equilibrium. Originally, I had a lot of react product, which was the pink part. Now I have a lot of product. I have changed where it's sitting. Okay, I've changed how much reactants we have. Now watch here. Same system, not changing anything. I'm now going to put it in ice water. 
Okay, so I'm going to put it in the ice water, and we're going to see huge change in different temperature. Put it in the ice, and in fact, hopefully you can see, if you focus down at the bottom, it's already changing color. Okay, and we're going to leave it there for a little bit. Now it's changing color. I'm shifting the controls on the, on the equilibrium again. And the way I like to describe this to my children is I pretend, so for example, I always pick on one of the boys. You know, as boys do, boys, boys always, always run do. up the down escalator, do they not? Because that's what boys they do at a mall. And of course, we pick on the one of the boys, and the boy is trying to run up the down escalator, and cat comes along, and she goes, <laughs> let's see what happens. So, but, but you know, not quite enough energy to get all the way up, so he gets halfway up, and now he's, he, it looks like he's not moving. So he's running up, escalator's going down because he's being silly, but he gets to the point where it actually he's not physically moving, he's reached an equilibrium. Cat comes along and she goes, let's have some fun. And she changes the speed of the escalator. Oh. So now it runs, now it's going faster as it's come down. And of course, being a boy, it takes him a while to catch up. And eventually he realizes that the down escalator is now going faster than he was running up. And it's taking him down a little bit, but eventually he catches up. But now he, he reaches that equilibrium again, but he's further down the escalator. So if you were watching him, he was in the middle, nice further down because he had to the equilibrium got adjusted, it, con the situation changed. Ah, but then he has friends. Of course, you know, it's important to have friends. And friends come along and feed him lots of energy drinks and sugary things and all those things that you really shouldn't drink on a regular basis. And he gets a spurt of energy. Cat's not quite paying enough attention, mm. you know, because now she thinks it's hysterical waiting for him to fall <laughs> on his face, which is what I'd be doing. And he gets a spurt of energy, and he starts running up the escalator. And then Cat goes, oh, wait, 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 wait. Eventually, she catches up, and she gets to a new speed. And just as he's about to get off the escalator, she matches his speed. Shame, poor guy. So now he's at the top of the escalator. We've changed his equilibrium position again. He's running up as fast as the escalator's going down. We've shifted his equilibrium. So by changing temperature or concentration, we're like adjusting the speed of the escalator, basically. And it's got in our change position to accommodate that change. Now look here, our beautiful blue has gone pink. So Like magic. I love this experiment because you can see it goes, it goes blue very quickly yeah. in, the, in the hot water. It takes a little bit longer to go. I love it. It's where I've become a magician. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Temperature is actually quite an easy one to see. And what you need to remember is if we look at the equation on the board, delta H is given as negative, okay? That is for the forward reaction, and it's always for the forward reaction. We never refer to delta H for the reverse reaction. So it's always got to do with it as it's going from left to right, okay? Now, let me just see. It's still, oh, it's pink enough. It's fine. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to leave it in there a little bit longer. I'm going to take some hydrochloric acid, okay? I don't need to use a lot. And I'm also not going to use a lot because I don't really want to change the concentration too much. So I'm going to take some hydrochloric acid. Okay. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go, okay. And I'm going to explain all of the changes in a second. Uh, I think I need to make it a little bit pinker. No, it's fine. Okay. And I'm going to add in a couple of drops. Okay. I don't know if you can see. It's starting to go dark blue again darker than it was. I'll just add in a couple more. And actually, I'm forcing it to go blue. Okay? It takes a little bit longer, but it's definitely, if we compare it to my original, it's definitely pinker than originally. Mm. Okay, it's a little harder to see. Okay, let's put a couple more drops in. Oh, let's just put the whole bottle in. Uh, no! <laughs> This is why I'm doing the experiment. <laughs> just, I'm just saying, use it, don't use it. We can all be scientists. Yeah, or not. E either way. Actually, my school just had a inter-class competition, and this was not my doing. They were not my class. One of the classes chose to be mad scientists. Oh, so that was crazy. Somebody had the audacity to say they were taking off to me. Oh. Rude. <laughs> anyway, so anyway. But I put in some HCl, and what the HCl does is it actually, it's a little more difficult to see. I don't want to put too much in because it dilutes it. But if we refer back to the equation, can you see there's actually no hydrochloric acid in the equation? So now we're going to say to ourselves, what am I actually doing? 
I'm actually adding in Cr minus ions. And by adding in Cr minus ions, I'm forcing the equilibrium to change. Let's see what happens if I add in a little bit of water. Okay. So now we've got some water, and this you, you should see quite nicely. Okay, not sorry, too high. Add in the water. Can you can you see it's going light pink yes, again? Yes, it is. Okay, we are getting a little bit of a precipitate, so we're not sure where that's coming from. I think there might have been something in the hydrochloric acid. Yep, no, there was something in there. There was definitely something in there. Doesn't matter. But it's going pink. Yes, it is, definitely. Okay, now... I've changed the color. It was a little more difficult. See, I'm going to put it in hot water because this one works so nicely. You make it go blue again. I really like the blue color personally, but that's I just like me. the pink color. Me too. Do you like the pink color? Yeah, the pink really? color. Really? It's really pretty. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm allergic to pink, <laughs> just so you know. This is as close to pink as I get. That's pretty too. But blue, not so much. I like the blue. The blue, th you can see nice. Oh, yeah. Works so nicely with the blue. Okay, now... It's going to change a little bit because I've changed some of the concentrations, I've changed some of the conditions, and in fact here we've got, that was the, that's the colder part and that's the hot part. So he, I, I really should be, become a, a magician, I think. <laughs> that's definitely what I'm thinking. So let's go back to the board because now we actually need to talk about what was happening and why because it's important that we know what was happening because it's not just... I get the color change, but why do I get the color change? I think the temperature was quite, is an easy one to explain, but let's just go through it, okay? Now, when the reaction is blue in color, it means that I have a lot of reactants, okay? There's lots of this, pres lots of this, um, let's do it in white. There's lots of the COCl4, okay? When it's pink, it means I have lots of the COH2O, okay? That's what I've got to consider. That means when I describe what's happening, I either say that if I have lots of the blue, then I'm favoring the reverse reaction because it's a reactant. If, I, if it goes pink, it means I'm favoring the forward reaction because I have lots of product. Okay, so let's actually talk about what's happening. So here, here we go. We need to, before I can actually explain all the changes, we need to discuss... Le Chatelier's principle, okay? Now, what Le Chatelier said was, when the equilibrium of a system is disturbed, such as we change temperature, we change concentration, we change pressure, any of those, the system tries to restore the equilibrium by counteracting the factors causing the disturbance. So, what it means is the system is, and I like to describe it like this to my kids, is I go to my learners is I say, the system's a little bit like a teenager. It's never happy. <laughs> when it's hot, it wants to be cold. When it's cold, it wants to be hot. When there's lots of pressure, it doesn't want any. When there's no pressure, it goes, I want pressure. When there's lots of concentration, it wants to use it all up. When there's no concentration, it wants to make it. Okay? It's never happy. It does the opposite. Or it's a little bit like, you know, when your mom says to you, don't do that, what do you do? You do it. You do it. Isn't that how? Yeah, that's how things work. That's how teenagers work. Yeah. You, and I, I'd actually like to say we grow out of it, but some of us don't. But <laughs> even we grow out of the not doing things, we, but we're never happy. Let's you're be never honest. happy. When it's winter, we want it to be summer. When it's summer, we want it to be winter. You know, my classroom, I'm very blessed. I have an aircon, and in summer, I get told, put the aircon on because it's good. So and they want it to winter, be cold. You want in winter, you want to heat up. Uh, I can never win, seriously, make up your mind. But they're teenagers, we get over it. So, what are the factors that can influence equilibrium? Concentration, temperature, and pressure. I couldn't show you pressure using this experiment because there's no gas involved. So this is very important, okay? Temperature, uh, pressure, sorry, only involves gases, there has to be at least one gas present. If there's no gas present, pressure makes absolutely no difference whatsoever to the equilibrium position. Very, very, very important. Secondly, here, notice that I haven't put a catalyst in here. A catalyst absolutely affects the rate of reaction. We spoke about that last week. All a catalyst is going to do is it's going to make us reach the equilibrium faster. That's it. It will not change color, will not make it go to the left or the right or make sure we have more product or reactant, nothing whatsoever. Just gets there faster. 
Surface area also has no effect on equilibrium because it doesn't affect how much of the stuff we have. Okay, so before we take a break, let's consider what happens with one of the reactions. Okay, so we have our reaction, which I've got back on the board, and I add water. By adding water, I'm putting in extra H2O. When I put in extra H2O, that is like cat increasing the speed of the escalator. Okay? We've got more H2O. It needs to use it up. The only way this reaction can use the H2O is to make reactants. We have to make this. So by adding in water, we increase the amount of water available. The system needs to counteract the, dif the disturbance. The disturbance was adding the water. It counteracts the disturbance by using up the water, and it uses up the water by making product. That makes it go pink. Okay, have we got that? We counteract it by using it up. So we add the water. If I went, and I actually didn't put it on the board, if I went the opposite route, okay, and I was able to take the water out. So instead of adding water, I now remove it. I take it away. However that happens, okay? We're not going to worry about that right now. The system now goes, okay, now we've got a problem. You're taking stuff away from me. I need to make... What you, have just what you have just removed. How does it make it? By favoring the reverse reaction, which means the system will go blue because we'll have a lot more COCl4 in the system, okay? It's counteracting the disturbance. So the first time I said, well, I added water, so it's going to want to use it up. Second time, I took the water away, so now it's going to want to make it, okay? Let's do one more before we go for a break. What about, oops, wrong way, wrong, wrong button. When I added the HCl, hydrogen chloride, okay, HCl. By adding HCl, I'm doing what is known as a common, this is quite an important term, it's known as the common iron effect. What I'm doing, actually, by adding HCl is I'm adding in Cl minus ions. So I'm increasing, okay, let's get rid of, yeah, no, I'll do it up in color so you can see it. Let's do it here. I'm increasing that concentration. I'm adding in more Cl minus ions. What does the system need to do? The system goes, hang on, wait, 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 wait. I've added in extra HCLs, uh, Cl minus ions. I counteract the Cl minus by using it up. By using it up, I favor the reverse reaction and it goes blue. Because now I have a lot more reactant when I'm done. Okay, so do you see where we're getting? See where we're going? Whatever I do, the system does the opposite. So I add something in, the system's going to use it up. Take something out, the system's going to want to make it. Okay, then I think, Kat, we can take a break there. I think we and must. And then I will explain the temperature changes okay. after the break. And okay. get to a couple questions, I hope. So, you guys already heard that you cannot move unless it's to stretch or to, I don't know what else you want to do, but don't do much because we'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. I hope that you haven't just joined us because it's been so awesome so far. We've done some awesome color changes. We've checked out the After Earth snippet there, which is really, really awesome. I can't wait to see that. But I'm not going to take any more time from Tracy, guys. She has something awesome to share, but share to you <laughs> about Curio. She's busy smiling here, so that's why I'm like, my God, she always smiles at me, I know. But like, she has something really awesome to say about Curio. So, Tracy. Thank you. Okay, so Curio is a wonderful thing on Mixit. Okay. And we all know most of you have Mixit, I'm sure. Okay, and if you don't get it, because this is the worst, even if this is the only reason why you have yeah, Mixit. I, I know there's lots of other platforms, but this still this works. totally awesome. No, this is great. It's a nice way to do revision. So what you need to do is you need to go onto Mixit, okay, on your phones. You then need to go to your contacts and go to contacts on Mixit. Add contact manually is the instruction you need to give your phone. You're then going to enter the following ID, which is Curio. Ooh, maybe I should actually have a pen color there. 
curio.co.za, Q-U-R-I-O.co.za. So enter it in manually. Then you're going to enter in a username and your cell phone. Okay, so probably the same one you would use on Mixit. Send it off. A confirmation SMS will then be sent to your phone. Please then complete the registration with doing whatever the SMS tells you that you need to do. Once you've done that, okay, you go to the general apps on your phone and you can open the Curio app. Once there, use the number that was sent to you in the SMS to register on our platform, okay? So this will send you to the correct platform to get to us, okay? Why am I telling you to do this? Because we are going to be setting weekly mini assignments for you guys, okay, based on what we have done. And in fact, there's a mini assignment on Curio right now for you to do. It's multiple choice type questions. It's a really good way for you to really get an, a feel of how you're doing with the section of work. So you, once you've registered and you've got your SMS and you're on the platform, to complete the assignment and for this week's science assignment, you need to enter the code PS12. Okay, there are a few questions there right now. Okay, so take a few minutes. Remember, open your contacts manually. You're going to go to curio.co.za, put your username and cell phone number in, send it off. Look at the, you will get a confirmation SMS. You need the number in that SMS. Go to your general apps, open up Curio app, use the number in the SMS to complete your registration. And also, Tracy, it will yes. be posted on Facebook, the instructions as well. Good. Okay, so if you didn't get that, because we can't keep it up for too long, we'll be on Facebook. It's a great platform, guys, even if this is the only reason why you use Mixit, because I know there's lots of other you know, social platforms and chatting platforms. This is just a great way to get another idea. And let's be honest, the more practice we get, the better we get at what we're doing. Of and course. that's really what this is about. And I think it's important that you guys get an indication of how you're doing. Because a lot of times you think you're doing okay because somebody's talking to you about it and then come question time and then that's when you start to realize, ooh, maybe not so much. do that so well. Not so much. Good way. Okay. So now that we've got that, instructions will be on Facebook. Let's go back to what we were doing. We've done that. We've done that. So I've just got to find where I was. So it's very easy to get, ooh, very easy to get me confused, as you can tell. All right, no, we went there, because we went there, this, let's go back. Right about now, my director is not the happy bunny. Which number are you looking for? No, there that we one. go. Okay, because before the break, we looked at the effect of concentration. All right, now we need to talk about temperature. And this is why the fact that we recognize that this delta H is for the forward reaction is very important. Remember, with an exothermic reaction, grade 12s, that means it gets hot. The forward reaction for this chemical equilibrium is exothermic. It gets hot. Doesn't mean that it's going to explode. Unfortunately, it doesn't mean that it's going to get so hot you can't touch it. It just means there's an increase in temperature. Okay? That increase in temperature is really important. But it's only for the forward reaction. When I reverse the reaction, I actually decrease the temperature because the reverse reaction is endothermic. Hopefully you remember that from your potential energy graphs. With this system, if I increase the temperature, it's like making it a hot summer's day. What do we do? We want the air con on, we want the fan on, and we complain that we are so hot, we don't know what to do with ourselves. If we have the um, luxury of being anywhere near a pool, we want to go put our costumes on, get in a cold bath, get into a cold pool. We want to cool down. So the same thing happens here. If I increase the temperature, the system goes, okay, the outside temperature is getting hotter and hotter and hotter. I need to take away this heat so it favors the reaction that will make it get colder, which is the endothermic reaction, which is why when I put my, my pink test tube into the hot water, it went blue because now it's taking away that extra heat that I gave it and making the reactants because that's the endothermic part of the reaction. It makes it get colder, counteracting the disturbance. The disturbance was the increase in temperature. It counteracts it by trying to get colder, favoring the endothermic reaction. The opposite happens if I decrease the temperatures. This is like winter, right? We're all in winter. We all know this. 
And what is it I know for me? And once my feet get very, very cold, so the first thing I do when I get home is I go and fill my hot water bottle so I can heat up my feet. And I will sit with my hot water bottle on my feet all night, and I love it. It's the best thing I in the world. I know it is okay? the best feeling. I love it. Okay, it's, and I'm saving the earth because it's a hot water bottle and not, a, not an electric heater. blanket or a heater. I don't even use a heater in my house because you can use blankets and you can use a hot water bottle. Wow. Now I'm good, hey? Yeah. I don't even use my electric blanket ev anymore. Wow. I use my hot water bottle. So I'm Thank you for saving our earth. Oh, you know, thousands of years from now, it's going to be my great, 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 great grandchildren. Yeah. I will no longer be alive. And exactly. if I am, please shoot me because I will be old and that won't be pretty. <laughs> anyway, oh and God. shriveled and let's not go there. Okay, let's keep, get back to the front, okay? But hmm. Yes, I'm saving it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. I need more sleep, and we know this. So, I decrease the temperature. System now has to adjust. How does it adjust? It adjusts by favoring the exothermic reaction, favoring the reaction that makes it get hot. Okay, how does it do that? It favors the forward reaction in this case, and it gets hotter. Please, 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 great tolls, please note. This is an example, okay? Do not learn that if you increase the temperature, you will favor the reverse reaction because it is endothermic. It depends on the reaction, okay? So what you learn is you learn that if I increase the temperature, the equilibrium will shift to favor the endothermic reaction. You need to be able to identify which part of the reaction is endothermic, if it's the forward or the reverse, okay? Please be careful with that grade 12s. It always worries me that you're going to learn it according to a certain um, example that might, you might not get. Though we are doing the more common ones, okay? Now we've got another one. I couldn't do pressure with you because there were no gases involved and it is quite difficult. But if I look at the effect of pressure, if I take an equation, a reaction like this, which has got N2O4, um, dinitrogen tetraoxide, which is a colorless gas, and actually, it forms NO2 nitrogen dioxide. We've, we can create nitrogen dioxide by putting copper in concentrated nitric acid. And it forms this beautiful yellow, um, beautiful brown gas. It's a beautiful color. It's just not pleasant to smell. You don't want to breathe it in. It makes you cough. It turns your hands brown. It's not pretty, okay? But we enclose it, we put it into a sealed container, and now we adjust the pressure on this gas. Pressure is defined as the number of collisions per unit area per unit volume, okay? So if I can, per unit time, sorry. So if I increase the pressure on my gas system by changing the volume, Boyle's law, increase pressure, change volume, okay? Make it smaller. The system now goes, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, increasing the pressure, Far too many collisions happening. I've got to get to a place where I can have less collisions. We look at this and we go, okay, hang on, wait. On the left-hand side, I have one gas molecule. On the right-hand side, I have two gas molecules. If I increase the pressure, I now need to make less collisions. The only way I can have less collisions is if I have less particles. How does it do that? It favors the reverse reaction. So it gets gets to this reverse reaction, which is less particles. I don't care about the size. The actual physical size of the molecule is irrelevant. They are so insignificant to the whole big picture that it doesn't matter, okay? Yes, I know N2O4 is bigger, but nowhere in the definition of pressure do I talk about the actual size of the molecule. I talk about the number of collisions. So if I can decrease the number of collisions, I decrease the pressure. So when I increase the pressure, I favor the side of the reaction, and in this case, the reverse reaction, which has the least number of molecules, so I can decrease the amount of collisions. Okay? If I do the opposite, and now I decrease pressure, and I'll go, okay, take the pressure off. Now the system goes, no, wait, wait, wait a minute. Don't like this. I like having a certain number of collisions per unit time. You've now taken that away. I make the volume bigger. It's the easiest way to do this by making the volume bigger. Hey, I can have more molecules. There's more space, okay? Favors the forward reaction, and in fact, it will go dark brown. Very important with a reaction like this one. Please be careful in actually saying that the gas will go colorless because it won't. It can never actually go completely clear, simply because in an equilibrium system, this says to us that we must have reactants and products present. NO2 is a dark brown gas. So I have some NO2 molecules present with lots of N2O4. It's 
going to make it look a little brown. Okay, it'll go very light brown, okay, almost colorless, maybe if you manage to adjust the pressure enough, though that's very, very difficult, but it won't go completely colorless. Be careful, it's not like the cobalt chloride, the, the first one that we got, where we got a very nice distinctive color change. This one mainly just goes light brown and dark brown. When I make, when I decrease the pressure and I make lots and lots and lots and lots of product, it goes a very dark, dark brown, okay? So, because there's lots of it, the color just doesn't make much difference to it. All right, so, now, very important. They like to try and trick you out, but you guys are all going to be clever. The effect of a catalyst, please be careful here, grade 12s. I see this all the time. You're so into the whole thing of, okay, hang on, wait, the catalyst increases the rate. So if I increase the rate, then somehow you go and it must favor the forward reaction. No, 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 no. All a catalyst does, a catalyst does not affect the equilibrium. So a catalyst does not make, does not determine whether we're going to get lots of product or lots of reactants at all. All a catalyst does is make us get there quicker. That's it. It means that, equi that equilibrium gets established a lot faster. Okay, so please be careful with this one. They're going to try and trick you out because they're going to use a catalyst in rates of reaction. They're going to use a catalyst in equilibrium and they're going to ask how it affects them. Catalyst increases rate. We use positive catalysts at school level. You do get negative catalysts. They decrease rate. We're not going to use those. We use positive catalysts. Increase the rate. Do not affect equilibrium at all. Okay, very, very important. Okay, very important. All right, I'm a little concerned that I'm going to run out of time. Time so always goes so fast when you're having fun. It's quite scary, actually. So I'm wondering, Kat, do you have, do you have any I questions? Do, do you think we can, before I get to these, because I've, I've only got a couple of minutes, and I just don't mm -hmm. want to get halfway through. I know you said something that you had a question about spontaneous reactions. Yes, there was a question on that, but you did manage to answer that afterwards. I'm just okay. checking but for another one that I just saw. Uh, probably what the question was, I'm just going to talk about, mm -hmm. was what is a spontaneous reaction? And all that means is it's a reaction that doesn't need help. So it's like, for example, the um, I don't know, ah, breathing is a spontaneous reaction. So the reaction that happens in our lungs when we breathe is spontaneous, okay? Or um, when I put potassium in water, that's a spontaneous reaction. I don't need to heat it up. I don't have to keep heating it. It just happens on its own, okay? And it'll keep going on its own. So we don't have to okay. keep heating it, yeah. Okay, yeah. so here's a question by, yes. um, let's say, Mini. Mini is <laughs> Not let's say, it's his name. Okay. Uh, um, he asks, would I be correct to conclude that an increase in temperature favors endothermic and a decrease in temperature favors exothermic? Absolutely. Someone got it. That's exactly what it is. Because endothermic means that it gets colder. So if I increase the temperature, it's going to want to get colder. Endothermic, mm -hmm. decrease the temperature, it's going to get hotter, which is exothermic. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, you are 100% correct. Yay. Yay for you. I'm checking if we have another one. Oh, Tracy, you went through all of this. So really, <laughs> there's <laughs> nothing I went through all of this. I you was did. just so good because I talked so much. You did. No, um, I'm just so good at... I think I just talked too much. I think that's the problem. More than anything else. <laughs> so guys, the point of this, because I know I'm going to have to say goodbye in a couple of seconds. Learn the fact that when we, when we, and when you have to explain equilibrium, is you go, what changed? I increased the concentration. How do I counteract the concentration? I must use it up. Mm. Where does it shift the equilibrium? Okay, and unfortunately, I have run out of time. So I'm going to have to say goodbye. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you for such an awesome show. You always do. You don't like leaving us, do you? Guys, we're going to have to go. I know that we could stay here until 12 midnight, but unfortunately, some of us need our sleep. So thank you so much for joining us, guys. You guys have been absolutely awesome. Stay on the page. Learn more. Learn extra. Bye, guys.